The calming beauty of nature is the backdrop of all Xterra races. But when the gun sounds, the drama begins. Today, we look at some of the gnarliest crashes, the most distinctive courses, and the closest finishes in Xterra history. Oh, crashed out on the first attempt. My chain broke. Darn, it's a brand new chain. That's four. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Four flats. Me too. Xterra races can be infuriating, as when equipment fails, or oh, thrilling, that. as when a herd of deer chooses to stampede across the course. But no matter how fit, how prepared, how game you are, sometimes the course gets the better of you. I just jumped off a little ledge. Heartbreak Hill. The Dust Bowl. Broken chains. Miles of dragging sand. Lava rock. Heat exhaustion. Dehydration. When does your body break down? In 2016, at the Pan American Championship in Utah, first-year pro racer Liz Gruber got a less-than-kind introduction to the unpredictability of Xterra mountain bike tracks. I didn't get knocked out. Uh, it happened really fast, and looking at the video, it just looks like I ran over a landmine or something, because you, even you had video footage, and it, I can't tell what I hit at all <laughs> and I just tumbled and my bike flew up and over the trail and uh, people came behind me pretty quickly and helped me and were really nice. Gruber, who had broken her collarbone, was in major pain. I don't know, I just heard there was a rider down up the trail, so I just ran up the trail to help out however I could. I just carried her bike down and helped walk her out. Looks like she probably broke a collarbone, maybe a couple of ribs. Um, we need medical on camera 15 up the hill. The downhill just has a couple rocks, like bigger rocks that you just need to avoid. And I think I just had my weight perfectly imperfect and it just pitched me forward. I kind of like jogged a little bit with my bike to get to that road to be able to get out. And I was like, dang it, I feel so strong right now running. Take a deep breath. I broke my collarbone um, pretty cleanly and it was displaced. So that means I needed to get it reduced and surgically repaired with a plate and seven pins. The strength wasn't back for a while, and I couldn't work for a while, but it, it was fun to come back and, and continue to race Xterra. In 2005, the World Championships in Maui were site of one of the more notorious falls in Xterra history, a mishap that almost cost Frenchman Nico Lebrun his lone world title. France's Nico Lebrun has settled in to eat away at the front runner's lead. With 20 miles of racing, Lebrun is the first to enter T2 and running is Lebrun's strongest discipline. A single misstep, and leads can vanish in an instant. Pressing for the finish, Nico Lebrun gets ahead of himself. Over two hours of flat out effort comes screeching to a halt on a piece of lava. It was a broken elbow for the 32-year-old, who had previously won two World Championship medals, but no goals. Lebrun grimaced through the final quarter mile to claim the career-defining, if painful, victory. That really hurt, still won, and I realized that the after party was more to cure the pain than to celebrate. Xterra Adventures is presented by Tea Tree. The experience. Discover the magic of Tea Tree. Xterra. 
racing in apparel for your active lifestyle. Visit xterraplanet.com. In 2004, when the World Championships were held on the original Wailea Maui course, Jamie Whitmore was hungry for her first world title after having finished second the two previous years. She was trying to stay close to the defending champ, Canada's Melanie McQuaid, when disaster struck. I crested over the plunge and like, I don't even know what happened. I cannot honestly tell you what I hit. It was probably just a loose lava rock and my speed was just going so fast that I ate it. And I, and I didn't just like go down and fall. I literally, as we would say, ragdolled. So it was like I hit the ground and then just tumbled. Got back on the bike at some point, and I think I remember like bracing to not break anything because they always tell you like tuck everything in, tuck and roll. So I did, and I know it hurt because I can just remember the scrapes being everywhere. Got back on the bike, and I think I couldn't quite get the other foot in. So you see me descending down, one foot's clipped in and one's kind of flailing, and it wasn't too much longer that I ate it again. <laughs> oh my gosh, and then I got back on the bike, and by that point I was at the end of the plunge and the worst was over, so I just kept going. After two falls, Whitmore would have been forgiven for calling it a day, but she stayed in the race. So I kept telling myself, all you have to do is close the gap, to like close what you lost in the crashes. And, and somehow, like maybe if I just run as fast as I can, I'll catch her. And I do remember coming into transition and I did get word that she was not far off. And even with a shorter distance, it was a matter of just get your composure, take your time, and then like slowly hunt her down. And, and, and that's exactly what I did. With a stellar run, Whitmore completed the improbable comeback, defeating McQuaid by nearly three minutes to claim the first world title of her inspiring career. But two years later, in 2006, another nasty crash on the bike course left Whitmore bruised, bloodied, and, after a few false starts, unable to continue meaning her chance for another world championship had been dashed by the unforgiving Maui bike course. Giving the race all that you have is no guarantee of the result you deserve. This isn't going to be pretty visit to the hospital. <laughs> In 2011, Lance Armstrong qualified to race at the Xterra World Championships by finishing fifth at Xterra, Utah. And he entered Maui with ambitious goals. Going out there and, and giving my best, and, and maybe that's top five, maybe that's top ten. Could be better, I don't know, but uh, that's why we have the race. We'll go out and find out. What he found out was that Xterra can be brutal. Armstrong was leading the race when, with a mile to go on the bike, he crashed and hit his head so hard he cracked his helmet. Right. Despite a concussion, Armstrong got back on his mountain bike and finished. But he faded badly, ultimately placing 23rd. An inauspicious ending to one of Xterra's most infamous episodes. To win here, you've got to be on in all three disciplines. The depth of the field is so strong that you have to have a great swim, an amazing bike, and then one of the top runs, I'm definitely here to win. It's been a big driving force in my life for several years to come out on top in this race, and I feel like this is the year. The 15th time was the charm for Josiah Midor in Maui, but his race to the world title wasn't without incident. The father of three ran smack into a tree he had intended to hurdle, but managed to hang on for the win. It's no surprise that MMA star Nick Diaz can take a hit, but in 2009, the Maui course gave him more than he's ever had to handle in the octagon. You know, I fought a lot of people and uh, a lot of really good competitors, but as far as Xterra goes, you know, Mother Nature is going to definitely be a really tough opponent. The notorious plunge had claimed another victim. Xterra is about more than wicked crashes. It's also known for its unique, 
and uniquely challenging race features. Case in point, Xterra France's mass start, which sees all 2,000 competitors diving in at once, churning through the water en masse, looking like a colossal school of spawning salmon. And once competitors survive the swim, they get to take on a mountain bike course featuring man-made ramps. We're here around the Lake of saint rue and Xterra France is famous for one thing though, the bike park. Just tell me it's all gonna be all right. We got berms. So we got pump traps. There are some small ramps. I started to uh, build this uh, bike park in 2011, pretty soon, uh, when the Xterra France uh, uh, was created. Today uh, they need uh, 2,800 wood pallets to, uh, to create the bike park, which is quite uh, huge, and uh, 5,000 screws just to build everything up. A big signature of, of this race. For sure it had a big value because uh, the atmosphere it's, uh, it's amazing you have people going on top uh, you know on the bike uh, under it uh, you know for spectator running so it's uh, yeah it's a beautiful setup. Perhaps less inviting is the huge surf that greets the world championship competitors in Maui. There's surf, the waves are big, it's choppy, the water is like a big washing machine. For the average person it's really intimidating. Uh, there's probably a certain amount of them just want to turn around and walk away. I think the average age group is freaking out probably. Uh, I think most of the pros are freaking out. The challenges aren't always over when you exit the Pacific Ocean. In 2018, heavy rain in the week leading up to the race rendered the course a slick thick, muddy mess. No one could gain any traction, and athletes were forced to push their bikes up the hills. As a result, finishing times were an hour slower than typical, and competitors were left stymied, frustrated, and absolutely covered in mud. Even when it wasn't muddy, the old Maui course was famous for its tricky features, and in particular, a nasty downhill known as the plunge. always difficult just because of the lava rock. It was the one descent that just had piles and piles and piles of lava rock. And what you have to understand about lava rock is it's not heavy and dense like like a lot of other rocks that you'd find say on the on the west coast or and if they're not stuck in the ground. As I described before, it's just like a bunch of giant marbles and they just go everywhere. So when you're descending, if you hit a big one the wrong way, like it, it, it'll knock you down. Welcome to the plunge. Gotta go. The plunge is death defying. Sort of thing that you want to be able to hit at speed, uh, but uh, maybe not too fast. It's fast and loose, and but as long as you stay on the trail, you're fine. The front wheel always starts bumping from one side to the other. It's just rocks everywhere, crashes, blood. I need a beer. This segment is presented by Tea Tree, the experience. Discover the magic of Tea Tree. The defining feature of the Xterra Lake Tahoe course is the Flume Trail, a narrow, rocky, single track bike path which skirts the mountainside overlooking the lake. The views are breathtaking, but the trail is not for the faint of heart. If you're afraid of heights, it's best to keep your eyes and your momentum going forward. And while Nevada has its dramatic views, in Richmond, Virginia, it was all about comedy. The Richmond race was known for its wacky spectators who would fire up the barbecue pit on the side of the mountain bike course and spend the day in costume, cheering or heckling the competitors. 
And in Saipan, one of the northern Mariana Islands in the West Pacific, the race course doubled as a historical tour. Saipan was a site of a major World War II battle, and the Japanese troops dug caves all through the mountains. Exterra competitors raced right through those narrow caves with only lantern light to guide them and ropes to help them exit. In a quarter century of racing, Xterra has seen some dramatic finishes, perhaps none more than in Utah in 2016. After two hours and 20 minutes of racing, Braden Curry of New Zealand had the lead on Josiah Middor, entering the finishing chute, but the American was closing fast. Middor had taken the win by seven hundredths of a second, the closest finish in Xterra history. For the race, there's a fair amount of hype, and you know there's some some clips of Braden saying, if, you know, if he got off the bike with any kind of lead or even within 30 seconds, there was no way anybody could beat him, and you know something like that. And just I remember it kind of lighting a fire under me a little bit. Middle hasn't always come out on the winning end of those close finishes. Eight years earlier, at the inaugural Xterra Winter World Championships, Middle held the lead just 20 meters from the finish line when he was passed by Brian Smith, a more experienced skier. Now, I knew I had a few seconds on the climb, but I saw a couple guys right there, and I said, well, if I can make all the gates, then, you know, maybe I can still hold on, and I, I fell on that last descent, ended up on my back, and, uh, looks pretty pathetic, but oh well, that's the way it goes. Xterra Adventures is presented by Tea Tree. The experience. Discover the magic of Tea Tree. Xterra. Racing and apparel for your active lifestyle. Visit xterraplanet.com. Melanie McQuaid is a three-time world champion and an Xterra legend, but for all her success, one of her most memorable races is the one she failed to finish. At the 2011 World Championships in Maui, the Canadian was on her way to a fourth world title. Only 100 meters from the finish line, when she started to swerve and stumble on the beach. If I, if I think back to the race itself, like the swim was totally normal, the, the, the bike, I was feeling awesome, and I was like riding through the men's race. I felt like I had unlimited power that day, like nothing was making me tired. I certainly did not feel the heat by any stretch. And then my strategy on the run that day was basically to win the race to the top, because I felt like, you know, if I got to the top and I had lost very little time, I could just point downhill and just let it go. And I got to about four miles, and um, at four miles, things were starting to slow down, and my brain was like, whoa. <laughs> and then Fred came by, and he's like, oh, you're doing awesome. They're, they're a mile behind you. You've got this. And, and that's pretty much the last words from a human that I remember. An unconscious McQuaid was carried off the course and transported to the hospital. The only other thing I remember on that day is um, waking up going, did I win? You know, and of course I didn't win because I never actually made it to the finish line. McQuaid is known for that unfortunate episode in 2011, as well as her three triumphs in Maui in the preceding decade. But more than anything, her stellar competitive career was defined by her intense rivalry with Jamie Whitmore. Jamie Whitmore and Melanie McQuaid took the woman's side of Xterra to a different universe. And actually, the woman's race became more important than the guy's race in a lot of cases. But the two of them couldn't like each other. It was like a Dave Scott Mark Allen thing, right? They could not like each other. It's a small pie, you want to be the best, and there's some person standing in your way. So I love the dynamics between the two of them because you would be at meetings with them, at, the, at the pro meetings, where they could be five feet from each other and not say a word. Right, because they both wanted to win, and the only way they win is if the other one loses. So that, to me, is rivalries are the best. That's what makes sport phenomenal. I can't 
talk about you know my female competitors without talking about Jamie because uh, she defines like an entire era of ex-terror racing um, because she and I went back and forth for so long. I, I, I think it was from like 2003 through 2009. We basically won or came second in pretty much every race for, for this block of time. It was such an aggressive uh, rivalry where, like, you know, when the gun went off, we did not like each other. Like, just having somebody that was so close to you with a different um, approach, a different skill set, a different, different strategy for every race was, was just so powerful in, in both of us um, striving to get the best out of ourselves. I think we thrived off of that rivalry. It just fed us and it just made us stronger and it made us better. And it was, it was awesome. She was a really powerful motivator for me to train hard, to find ways to limit my weakness and to look to ways to improve. I loved the fact that I could have one person that when I towed that line, it was like, I, I want to take her down. <laughs> and, I, and I know she felt that way about me as well. I mean, you can dig up any article and it was always, it was the Jamie and Melanie show. And I mean, it was fantastic. I love it. Coming up in the next episode of Xterra Adventures, the culture of Xterra, its Hawaiian roots, the family feel, the spirit of cooperation, of celebration, and what it means to live more. That's next time on Xterra Adventures.